Good morning. Thank you all for coming today. My name is Nicole Casper. I am the acting president of the Brockton Historical Society. If you are not already doing so and are able to stand, please stand as we welcome the Brockton and police Brockton Police and Fire Department Honor Guard and the Brockton Fife and Drum Piper and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now join me in welcoming Pastor Jeffrey Johnson from First Lutheran Evangelical Church who will give our invocation. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for today, and thank you for this extraordinarily beautiful weather. Thank you for all good gifts, because all good gifts come from you. Thank you for the Brockton Historical Society and um, this very special day in which we remember our brother and our friend, Jim Benson, and we dedicate this extraordinary book that he and Nicole have been working on. Um, we give thanks for the firefighters and first responders who do all extraordinary work in our lives, not only today, but historically. Help us keep the needs of others always um, foremost in our minds as we ask this through your name that is holy. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you all for coming today. This day is a little bit different than we had originally planned. Um, as, all you, as you know, Jim Benson passed away a few weeks ago. Jim was the driving force behind both the book and the memorial. And as first vice president, I've been raised into the role of acting president, much to my chagrin. Um, but with a lot of help from the board of the Brockton Historical Society, we were able to get everything together and have this um, event here. Jim started planning this event in January. Um, so I went back to my email and found that on January 30th, he had given, sent me an email with the program for today. So this was very near and dear to his heart and um, I'm glad we can pull it off and I'm glad you're all here today to join with us. Today we mark the 90th anniversary of the drowning of nine prominent Brocktonians, including Fire Chief William Daly, ex-Mayor Harry, Harry Howard, Highway Commissioner G. Fred Dahlberg, Dr. Arthur Peterson, Dr. David Bridgewood, Dentist Frank Moberg, Plymouth County Sheriff Earl Blake, John Sandberg, and Newt Salander, and their main guide, Samuel Budden, along with the lone survivor, Police Captain James Lays. We also remember Jim. Jim started the book in 2013 
and that was one of the, um, I met Jim in 2008 as he began work on his West Bridgewater Images of America book. We have the collection, I work at Stonehill College, and we have the Stanley Bowman collection. Jim used that collection to write his West Bridgewater and Brockton books. And he always talked about the Moosehead tragedy, which of course I had never heard of. Um, and then last year after the success of our Strand Theater Fire book, we decided to mark the 90th anniversary of the Moosehead tragedy by writing another book. But Jim had more plans. He really thought that there should be a memorial to those who died so that there would be a permanent marker to remember those, those gentlemen. As I've gone through Brockton history, and as not a native Brocktonian, um, it is a little more of a research um, project for me as I learn more Brockton history. But um, this, the Moosehead tragedy is really one of the big tragedies outside of the Grover disaster in the Strand Theater, where a large group of Brocktonians died at one time. And I'm pleased that everyone can join us today. So as we continue our program, I would like to invite Co City Council President Dennis Iraniri up um, to say a few words. Thank you. It takes me a few minutes to get to the podium so you can note that I'm becoming a part of history as well. In any case, um, it's a, great, it's a great honor to be here today, a great uh, privilege for me to uh, be here with some of my other uh, colleagues, and I do want to uh, take time to, to mention them. Uh, Attorney uh, Bob Sullivan, former City Council President and Council at Large is here. I also see with them uh, is also our former Mayor and City Council at Large, Winthrop Fowler is present. I also saw that uh, uh, my good friend uh, from Ward 6, uh, uh, Council Lally is here, and also our, our new Council from Ward 4, uh, Councilor Nick Castro. So, and if I left anybody out, I don't think I did, but uh, if, if in anything, I'm sure all councilors are, are, are into some type of a, of a busy day, would love to be here, but unfortunately they just couldn't. But I, I do want to uh, make mention, of course, of Jim. You know, I, know, I, I knew Jim for, for a good many years, and I, I knew him through the Camp Hello Business Association and his work at the church, naturally, uh, be it located in Camp Hello, which is Ward 4 and Ward 3. But I also learned of uh, the love that he had for the history of this city. And sometimes we forget uh, what the history uh, of the city is all about, and we need some people like him to remind us, uh, which he's done here in this particular uh, a book that he's uh, written again and, and bring it forth to something that happened on, on the May 13th, 1929, uh, just, to, just to highlight the, the fact that, you know, these important people, for, for whatever and how, you know, lost their lives. And, and I think that's... That's what's important as, as we take steps to continue to learn the history of this city. Uh, my mother was born in uh, August of 1926. And I tell you, the, the things she used to just tell me about the history of the city, and, and there's days when I'd like to say, Ma, but I, I, I do that, but I don't get the answer I want. But she could always fill me in on Brockton because she was born, as I say here, lived on Wilder Street, lived up by what you call the a Brockton Avon line. But there was no line because the Avon Park was there. So I used to say, where was the park? I mean, those little things there that, that we seem to, you know, want to always re recall and remember. And, and um, just even last evening, I, I was driving around the city with my sister. We went out to dinner, and she says, oh, let's take a little ride around the city. It's okay. And the first thing she knows when I'm on Warren Avenue, she goes, always remember the A building of the high school. Correct. Because she went there for four years. I only went there one year and I went afternoon sessions. It was great though, because you're there for four hours and you went home. But still, it, uh, it those are the things that we sometimes forget. But with Jim, you didn't. You could ask him a question about anything that transpired in the city, and, and he knew it. And uh, I mean, it's it's a great loss to us. But I think today is a is a wonderful day for a great tribute to to a wonderful to a wonderful man and I thank everybody that's participated in making this happen for him and to carry this day on and and as we all believe and I sure I surely I think we all do believe in in the in the eternal rest and there's no doubt that uh, Jim's here and he's watching over all of us and watching over everybody that's put this together to follow his steps through so with that being said enjoy the day and, and there's a few other people to speak and just on behalf of the the City Council and I as City Council President uh, uh, we we thank you for allowing us to participate as well thank you I now would like to call Senator Michael Brady forward to say a few words. 
And I'll admit, I switched the order. <laughs> Age before beauty, that's why we let Council President Dennis and here we go first, but um, it's an honor to be here. You know, Jim Benson was a good friend to all of us in the community, all the books he has written about the history of Brockton, being of Swedish descent. And before I go on about that, I also want to recognize our District Attorney Tim Cruz, uh, State Representatives Jerry Cassidy and Claire Cronin, who are here as well, and I think uh, Rep. Dubois is supposed to be on her way, but um, we have a lot of rich history in the city of Brockton, and Jim of being Swedish descent down in the Campello section of Brockton. He lived in West Bridgewater as well. He was very much interested in the history and he wrote many books about the history of Brockton. And Brockton has always been a diverse community, whether it was the Swedish section and the Campello section of Brockton. I know Karen Swanson was one of our former state legislators. She was a, a representative of Swedish descent. And then we had the Lithuanian village. We had the Polish section up the north side of Brockton. We had the Irish and the Italians kind of in the middle between the east and west side. And the French section was over the east side, the St. Lecoeur Church. My family goes back uh, at least three generations in Brockton on the Brady side. And um, it's always been a diverse community. After World War II, we had a lot of Greek immigrants who came in to the community. And then now there's a lot of Haitian and Cape Verdean uh, immigrants who have come into the city and they're part of our community and the cloth of the city of Brockton. They were the business owners and the people who served our community in, in public office. And we are a great community in the city of Brockton and it's all this diversity and all the people that have gave a commitment like Jim Benson that made us the city of champions. It's not just our, um, our sports figures which we have to honor them as well but a lot of the unsung heroes that work behind the scene like Jim Benson did and we're very grateful to him. He had been in a uh, great conversation with me over the course about the book he had written about Moosehead Lake, and it's a great honor to remember the tragedy that happened because we lost some great leaders in our community back then, but we also are here to honor Jim Benson, and uh, it's a great loss to our community, and we must never forget, and we're very grateful for those who have made us uh, remember the history of Brockton. We have other authors, I mean, Stanley Bowman with all his photography back in the day, Bob Kane, and many, many other people that helped us remember the great history in the city of Brockton, because we must learn from the history so don't make the mistakes in the future. And we can learn from that to make a better future for all of us in the, in the community here in Brockton. So I'm very grateful to be here. And uh, Carl Landerholm as well, who's a great historian in Brockton, he keeps reminding me of a lot of history of the Campello section of Brockton and many other friends who are here. But I'm grateful to be your senator. I'm grateful to be here on behalf of the state delegation. And uh, I thank everyone who showed up on this beautiful day. And, and as was mentioned, Jim is looking down on us. He brought the sunshine here to us today. So God bless you all. Thank you. I'd now like to invite Patrolman Al Gazzaro forward to say a few words. Thank you, everyone. It will be just a few words, I promise. I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, Jim Benson was a friend of mine. I've known him for years, uh, working through the Campello Business Association. But I'm here. Uh, fortunately, I'm able to bring, uh, who later became Chief Lays, his granddaughter here with us today, Elizabeth Lays, sitting right up front. I've uh, known her for years. Her and my mother have become fast friends from many years ago. And uh, she's always reminded me of this tragedy, just having her coming out to the family uh, functions. So with that, I'm just happy to be here and proud to be part of the dedication today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So now we're at the highlight of today's ceremony, the unveiling of the memorial. I would like to invite James Lay's granddaughter, Ms. Elizabeth Lay's forward to help us with the unveiling. And Jim's father, Eric Benson, has also agreed to help. So I'd like to invite Ms. Lay's and Mr. Benson up for forward, please. Today we remember those lost 90 years ago on May 13th at Moosehead Lake and the lone survivor and dedicate this memorial to their memory. Never let their story be forgotten. Thank you. Go ahead.
as I said, um, today was the dream of Jim Benson. Um, and I thought that it was important that we also remember him and as well as those who died at Moosehead. So I'd like to now invite up Jim's close friend and co-author of the book, Swedes of Greater Brockton, Lloyd Thompson forward to say a few words about Jim. Good morning. And uh, thank you, Nicole, for asking me to speak about my friend and colleague, Jim Benson. Um, we are the bookends of Jim's literary career. Jim and I wrote The Swedes of Greater Brockton in 2001, and you co-authored The Brockton Tragedy at Moosehead Lake, which will be unveiled later today. Um, oh, good, good. They didn't expect a tall guy. Mm -hmm. That's much better. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, st I'll start again. No, I won't. I'm only kidding. Um, you know, books and photographs are magic because they instantly transform you into a time traveler and put you on a path to a great adventure. Uh, our literary journey began with a pamphlet Jim produced for the 125th anniversary of First Evangelical Lutheran Church. Uh, I brought a copy. Um, this little booklet was done on archival research in the church, and thank goodness the church had had a secretary named Gertrude Forstrom who saved everything, and I'm glad she did. Um, we found all sorts of information in the church, and I'm so happy it had been preserved. Now, doing a little further archival research, we came up with this little booklet called The Last Communique, produced by a pastor in 1946. It's a biography of every single person in the church who served in World War II. Fascinating. This led to something very interesting. Because of it, we put together a dinner. At that dinner, we invited the Swedish consul, Frank Mead, from Boston. He joined us. Well, a couple of months later, he invited us to meet the Swedish ambassador at the Harvard Club in Boston. That was interesting things worked together very nicely. Well, we began thinking about the Swedes. Uh, I knew something about my family, Jim about his, and the people who had formed our church, which was the first Swedish immigrant church in New England, and it became the mother church for 80 other parishes in New England. We began to think about a book, and we began to write one. Maybe there's a story here. I thought there was, and it was great, great pleasure researching it and telling the story. We began the project in early 1999, and among the many interviews we held with the descendants of the early Swedes, we met the daughter of Fred Dahlberg. Her name was Dorothy Kendrew. She had a photograph of three of the men who had lost their lives on Moosehead Lake. She gave us the photograph. Jim knew about the tragedy, I did not, but it became the basis of Jim and Nicole's new book. Now, our Swedes of Greater Brockton was published in 2001, and it's significant to be here today because this is the site of our first book signing. And it's also interesting and significant that among the people who were there were Judge, and, Judge uh, Francis Murphy and, and his wife Gloria, Judge Bob Prince and his wife Geneva. Well, today, John Murphy is here, Francis Murphy and Gloria Murphy's son. Uh, we did a lot of other book signings, and I'll tell you one funny story. We did one at the uh, Rotary Club, if I remember it, big crowd. They asked a lot of questions, and one guy got up and he said, well, look at, do they still speak Swedish in Brockton? And I'll wait. Yeah, Ken, Ken was right. He warned me about the ambulances. So that's a good thing. Well, this, this one guy got up and he said, do they still speak Swedish in Brockton? And I looked at Jim and he looked at me and we both together said, yeah. <laughs> Our adventure continued. We were invited to participate in the New Sweden 365th Jubilee Centennial of the Swedes landing in Delaware in, in 1638. And that event, those events took place on April 4th and 5th in 2003. Uh, the book had some success. It, we were on the New York Times bestseller list, by the way. We were 1,092, and uh, that wasn't too bad. Um, so Jim and I and Willette uh, created a thing called Swedish Heritage Press, a small publishing venture to help preserve Swedish culture. We did, and it was interesting to do that. 
But Jim and I had a long relationship prior to writing the book. We served on the church council, the finance committee for many years, and it was easy to see his love for the church. Local history, the church, and his family were the loves of his life, and not necessarily in that order. In 2007, he was appointed the first parish administrator of the church's 140-year history, and he made a major contribution to that institution, to its growth, stability, and its future. Now, a few years ago, he appointed me as chairman of the Cornerstone Capital Fund Committee, and much of that activity centered around a series of concerts. So we booked a lot of well-known national, local, and international performers, believe it or not. Jim knew a couple of world-famous organists who came to perform on a magnificent Chance organ. I invited a couple of renowned pianists to perform on our Steinway. You see, Jim really liked the organ, and I really liked the piano. But there was never an argument. We both enjoyed the music of the 30s and 40s. His was the 1730s and 40s, and mine was the 1930s and 40s. We did agree that it might motorcycles as well. Going away. But we did agree that a mighty fortress sounded much better on the organ, and that Rhapsody in Blue sounded much nicer on the piano. Friends can always agree. My memories of Jim are good ones, lasting and meaningful. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it's written, there's a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to weep and a time to laugh. We have wept and we have mourned his loss, but Jim, Jim gave us many reasons to be joyful. Thomas Aquinas also wrote, there is nothing on this earth more to be prized than true friendship. Thank you. Okay, now for the shorter person again. <laughs> yes, one drawback of the Brockton Historical Society, it's easy to find, but it can be very loud on, a certain, day, on certain days, so. Um, today is bittersweet for me, as everybody's congratulated me about the book. They've also um, offered their condolences on Jim's passing. And we will always remember Jim. Um, I am not a native Brocktonian, as I said. I'm actually from Rhode Island. My interest in Brockton history comes first from meeting Stanley Bowman as, when I became the archivist at Stonehill College. I then met John Lernard, who was president of the Brockton Shoe Museum and president of the Brockton Historical Society for many years. And he pulled me into shoe history. And then I met Jim and kind of got pulled into the rest of Brockton history and we've, we've partnered. So I consider Brockton kind of my adopted city as I learn more and more. Um, and as now as president, um, I'm very grateful for all of the board members who are helping me along and explaining Brockton history to me. Jim used to always tell me how wrong I was on different things or correct me. So I'll now need other people. I'm sure Ken Galligan will step into that role quite nicely. Um, I do want to thank all of our dignitaries that are here today, um, most of them who were mentioned already. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Jim's family for being here, Ms. Lays for being here, John Murphy, who is the, great, is the grandson of Mayor Bent. Mayor Bent was the mayor of Brockton during the time um, of the Moosehead tragedy in 1928. For my board members, I do want to single out several people First of all is retired fire chief and second vice president Kenneth Galligan for his support after Jim died as I took on this role telling me what I needed to do um, and also helping a variety of ways as we put new exhibits together, did maintenance on the homestead building and even spreading mulch in 90 degree heat on Thursday. I also want to acknowledge Bob Myers who got roped into spreading the mulch on Thursday because he saw Ken doing it and stopped by and got handed a shovel. So be aware if you see Ken outside the Historical Society, it might not be a good time to stop by. He might put you to work. I also want to thank Edward Williams for helping coordinate a lot of the fundraising and speakers for today and his overall support and helping me get things done. Other board members include Bob Wood, George Churchill, David Kinkas, Lisa Landerholm, Carl Landerholm for their efforts um, helping us get things ready and taking charge of the parking. Mark Lindy and Brockton Cable for filming today and promoting today's event. 
and Janet Ekstrom for volunteering to plant the flowers and f saving me from having to dig in the dirt this past week. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank my family for coming up today and for my husband for putting up with me not being home for the last few weeks as I kept saying, well, I have to go to the Historical Society and do exhibits. <laughs> I'm now done. We now move into reunion period at Stonehill, so we, it'll be a few more weeks before he sees me at dinner. <laughs> Preserving history has always been something that's been very important to me. I've always loved history. And as I've become involved in both Stonehill history and, the, and Brockton history, I've realized how important history is as a community effort. And by being here today, you all are helping preserve Brockton's rich history. As a volunteer and donation-run entity, we hope that you will continue to support us as members and also consider additional donations. We will have books for sale inside. All of Jim's books are here except for West Bridgewater, since we're in Brockton. <laughs> um, but as we conclude, again, for those able, um, please stand for the retiring of the colors. And then after which, I invite you to join us for refreshments in the society and see our new exhibits and just visit and share the love of Brockton history. Thank you very much. Harry Coase. Right. Peace.